Hello there, I am Pobammer, how many small, whatever you want to call me. And I'm here to show you the basics of ROAC. Well, I'm going to try to keep this quick. So um, let's start with components. Uh, components are the organizational tool used to separate like reusable UI assets. Like an example of that would be a button. Oops. Uh, there can be three different types of vanilla component. I mean, components in vanilla ROAC, but you can only make two of them yourself. Uh, three component types are host components which would be like if we look at this this row act create element folder that would be a host component it's a roblox instance functional components like this right here and staple components being this component and pure component functional components are simplest that you can create uh but they're also extremely limited if you do not need any like life cycle events or state this is your best option because it runs the best it's just a function uh staple components have two subtypes being the component right here and pure component both of these support lifecycle events and state. Uh, the difference between components and pure components is uh, pure component only updates sometimes. It does like a very shallow equal check on your props and state. And if it's the same, it's not gonna update. So an example of when you would wanna create a component is when you're creating uh, like a button component like this right here. I'll show you why you want to use this do using stories. So let, let's, let's do that, shall we? Um, so as you can see here, I have this button thing and button component list so let's actually take a look at the code really quick so button story this is using the button component you can see it is 44 lines long total and this is 46 lines long total no that's not a big difference it's like oh why would i use that i'll show you in a second so back to studio if we look at this and we go button and we see our output down here and i press all of these they all do the same thing and they look the exact same but the thing is with this it's not just shorter to do it with the component, but you can also extend the behavior a little bit. So let's expand on what makes a staple component staple. So let's go to the uh, the cool little button component here. So this is our code here. You can see we render here, and this is just how I set it up. Let's let's make this component staple. So you can change how the button renders i mean how the component renders based on the state so let's let's actually get this started um by doing this so self set state and you're going to add like a table you can also do a function but we're not going to do that um so let's say let's make it so the font changes when we're hovering so is hovering equals false all right and we can do like self dot on input began uh input objects input object all right so if input object dot user input type equals equals me num that ooh, i've been using typescript my bad mouse movement then then we're gonna go set self set state and in it will be only called once but render will be called every time it needs to render i know that doesn't seem very fast but row act is actually surprisingly fast on input ended we're just going to do this and we're going to also go like this so what we're going to do is we're going to go like this else self.props.unactivated all right so there we go and what we're going to do here is i'm going to show you how the life cycle events i mentioned earlier behave so you can see here we have a bunch of these things um an example of the life cycle event that you might use more often is did mount and function button will unmount these do well what it says in the title when this is unmounted this will be called so print the component was unmounted print the component was mounted you can um for like will unmount you can like create a connection in did mount and you can disconnect it in will on that so like self dot connection it goes on the run service dot heartbeat connect function and i'm not going to do anything with this of course what we're going to do is we're going to go self dot connection disconnect and that'll get rid of the connection all right so like i was saying we're going to actually create a new type here it's going to call export type actually we don't really need to export that i type i button state oops i can't type i button state equals is is hovering boolean all right so we're gonna go like this we're gonna go state i button state equals self that's cool 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to change this to um, self dot on on input ended. And then we're going to change the other one to on input began like that. So that's cool. We're going to do a ternary here. If state dot is hovering, then dot Gotham bold else Gotham. Cool. Let's go and show you how this works. So if we go show the viewport, all right, if you hover over this, it should change the font to that. And you can see the component was mounted, was ran five times. As you can see, if we if we press the button thing, it says the component was mounted five times. And then if we press this again, the component was unmounted five times. So yeah, once we hover over these, you can see, of course, it still works. So that that's what a stateful component is. It has state and it has the lifecycle events. So yeah, that's really it. I hope this turns out good. Anyway, see you later.